and Peyton Manning ready to go to work and this has been for Peyton Manning this stadium and the one that used to be across the parking lot old Foxborough Stadium houses of horror he's never won here Dominic Rhodes is back to run the kick back Adam Vinatieri to put it in the air and the most anticipated game of the regular season to this point is underway in Foxborough. Rhodes from the 10 with a good run back to begin the game all the way out to the 45 yard line and Peyton Manning and the Colts will take over at that spot. After a 37 yard return the ball is at the 46 and the first play from scrimmage tonight is Edron James and they'll wrap him up behind the line of scrimmage. That's a loss of two. Mike Vrabel the inside linebacker in for the stop to make it second down and 12. You know this is a big play for the Colts and Edron James. It's a stretch play. He's going to run it right out here and try and get to the numbers. Now what the Colts are doing is they're going to play a hard edge. In other words when he starts that way get upfield and make him make a decision before he gets to the numbers. Colts go without a huddle as they almost always do. Loss of three second and 13. Manning out of the shotgun. Moving away to buy time. Going deep downfield and it will be taken in by Marvin Harrison inside the 10. So Peyton Manning on second down stepping to his right out of the shotgun and a 48 yard pass and catch silences this big crowd immediately. Right. Asante Samuel is number 22 on him and, and that is tough to cover Marvin Harrison all over the field. He's expecting him to stay outside but when he goes into the post he gets about three steps on Samuel. It is a beaten up banged up injury depleted secondary for New England. They are very vulnerable back there as they showed on that first play that Manning goes to the air with and now Edgerin James takes the ball inside the five yard line. Samuel comes up to make the tackle. Marvin Harrison throwing the block during the regular season as you take a look at that against the Patriots. Two and eight is Peyton Manning and of course 0 and two in postseason the last two years. And they've been very effective down here in this area mostly running the ball a year ago and the year before that it was a lot of play action pass and here they run it and this is James not getting to the end zone Edron James having another banner season he's averaging 4.9 yards per carry coming into the game and Willie McGinnis makes the tackle setting up a third and goal for Tony Dungy's Indianapolis Colts and I know what Tony Dungy is thinking right now this is exactly what I wanted he said when we play these guys we never have the lead Indy gets to the line quickly you can see the Patriots and they have to call a timeout because you saw Randall Gay coming in going off they need to get set so Indianapolis forces Bill Belichick to take an early timeout. So Indianapolis trying to cash in on its first drive they, the Patriots have scored first in all six regular season games both postseason games from 2000 on now it's third down and goal from the one yard line James the running back Manning as he's prone to do pointing across the line a lot of gesticulating and now a quick drop and a fade to Harrison and Harrison is able to make the catch for the touchdown one on one with Asante Samuel the left corner and Indianapolis strikes first you know the way the Colts call their plays he has two runs down there and one pass. Now any time that he finds tight coverage man to man out here on Marvin Harrison he is going to try and get him the ball because Marvin Harrison will win those battles. So he looks out there he had a run call he checked out of the run saw tight coverage man to man on Marvin Harrison and that's where he went. Mike Vanderjat for the point after. Smith to put it down. And so a perfect beginning for the Indianapolis Colts after James loses three on the first play. The long pass to Harrison and Tony Dungy's team into the end zone. Two and a half minutes into the game. The Colts on top in New England. Seven to nothing. Indianapolis on top. Seven to nothing. Dominique Rhodes helping to set it up with a 37 yard return of the opening kick and of course we saw Manning and Harrison establish a record a couple of weeks ago in Indianapolis on a Monday night 
Most touchdown passes for a quarterback receiver combination. Dave Rayner to kick off. It's a short kick. It's fielded to the 14 by Bethel Johnson to the 31. Indy moves so quickly that you don't have time to go back and dissect everything. But, John, let's go back and take a look at that long pass to Harrison. Well, here's Marvin Harrison, and he's going to run the post. Then you always say on a post, what happened to the safety? Eugene Wilson here. Well, you see Dallas Clark also runs a post. He comes with that post. Marvin Harrison comes in behind them. Both Dallas Clark and Harrison are about the same point. But you see when Clark runs that post, that takes the safety out of there and opens up the post or the middle for Marvin Harrison. Four different strong safety starters this season for New England. Talking about the injuries defensively, especially in the secondary, as New England now has the ball for the first time. And Corey Dillon on a tender ankle picks up about four. Kasher and Mankins, the left tackle and left guard, are rookies. Brady throws. That'll be a first down. His favorite receiver is Deion Branch, the MVP of the Super Bowl last year. Brady, during the regular season against the Colts, 4-0. And in postseason, of course, he's knocked them out in the last two seasons. So he's been perfect against Indianapolis. Isn't he the calmest, coolest thing you've ever seen in a pocket since Joe Montana? Three Super Bowl rings. This team trying to become the first to win three straight Super Bowls, if they can do it this year, make it four out of five. Toss back to Dillon. And Corey Dillon, who had missed a game, and then last week Patrick Pass was their running back, and it's possible that Dillon would have played very little, maybe not at all, had Pass not gotten hurt last week, hamstring pull in the second quarter. This is an organized play. I saw him practice this the other day, where they pitch it one way and then cut back. You usually cut back off a handoff, not a pitch out. This is a play where they pitch like they're going outside to the left and then cut right back to the right. Dylan is a tough guy. I mean, he has a he has a bad ankle. They didn't think, as you said, he could play last week, and they got in a situation where he had to play, gutted it out. Again, I watched him the other day in practice, and he just gutted out practice. And if, and if the Patriots are going to be able to run the ball tonight, it has to be Corey Dillon. Last week, as you see, he came in in the second quarter. He scored both touchdowns as New England was in jeopardy of dropping under 500. They were down by nine points in that game to Buffalo. First and ten. The ball is at the Colt 46-yard line. And they start with a heavy dose of Dillon, but this time there's no gain. Harper makes the tackle. First guy to hit him. Cato June, the linebacker, five interceptions this season. He's run two of them back for touchdowns. A little swing pass, one-handed by Dillon. Nice side step there, and he'll pick up a first down. So Corey Dillon, a little swing pass, a one-handed grab. Nice little juke move and a first down on a 16-yard pickup. You know, one of the things you have to do when you have a good pass rusher like Dwight Freeney, you have to try and get outside of him. You can get outside of him with runs. You can get outside of him with screen passes. Or you can cut him, get his hands down, and just throw a loop pass like they did to Corey Dillon on that play. As you said, Al, he made a heck of a catch one-handed, and then right after that catch, made a very good move. And he needs a breather right now, and they are really short at running back, so Brady will spread it out here and work out of the shotgun. And he throws over the middle, and that's caught underneath by Troy Brown. When you look at their running backs, Patrick Pass is hurt. Kevin Falk is hurt. So they went out and got Mike Cloud off the street. He played with the Giants in preseason and last year and picked up a fullback, Heath Evans, as you look at Mike Cloud, who played his college ball at Boston College. So Cloud will see his first action as a Patriot this season as Dylan gets a rest. Heath Evans coming over. He's the only other running back, fullback, who came from the Dolphins. And I think if they ever get in a bind that they really don't have a running back or a running game, they'll go to that formation we just saw in that last play, empty backfield, five receivers. Second down and six, and Cloud will see some immediate work. But his tackle back of the line of scrimmage, well back of the line of scrimmage, Robert Mathis, a pass rush specialist who has eight sacks this season, first guy to break through. Tell you, and he's really been something special. As you said, Ali, he has eight sacks and then five fumbles on those sacks. So, so he not is only a sack guy, but he's a strip sacker. And when you have him on one side and Freeney on the other side, 
you have some pass protection problems, especially in downs like this, third and long. At least one sack for Mathis in every game this season. Third and 11, Brady throws over the middle. One of their tight ends, Daniel Graham, and he'll be tackling the 22-yard line, about two yards short of the first down, so you have a fourth down coming up. Crowd already imploring Belichick to go for it. It'll be fourth down and two at the 22. And he is going to go for it. Watch Dwight Franey here. When you know you're going to get double, then don't go where they're going to double you. He does a, he does a stunt and goes all the way on the other side. Fourth down closer to one, one and a half is the ball, as you can see, just outside the 21 yard line. So at least they're going to line up to go for it. And they brought Corey Dillon back in. And they will go for it. And they will get it on a quick slam as he hits David Gibbons for a first down. I tell you, Tom Brady loves to throw this, and he can throw it as quickly as anyone. And all you have to do is get a sneak. Get, just get inside. Right there. Right the minute that he gets in or the split second that he gets inside that corner, Tom Brady's going to give him the ball. Five different receivers already for the Patriots at the 16-yard line. First down. Alert, alert, alert. 8, alert. 6.40 to go, opening period. 7 to nothing, Indianapolis. Dylan, you know, John, I'm thinking about that call by Belichick and what it means. And to me, partially, it means he says, you know what? This is going to be a high-scoring game. I'm going to need a lot of points tonight. Right, we're, we're, it's going to be a shootout, and if it's going to be a shootout, let's get started in the first quarter. And the other thing it means to me is the confidence in Tom Brady. I mean, if, if he's really your best player, and then you, you get a fourth down, you need a first down, why not put it in your best player's hands? And Brady gets it. Dillon is now split to the left in the shotgun, so you've got Corey outside. Five receivers, all running patterns. Brady steps away from the pressure and throws for a touchdown to Deion Branch. Well, that's a pretty good way for the most anticipating game of the year to start. I'll tell you, things. you can't beat this start. It's Deion Branch is, he's the inside receiver there, and he just runs a corner pattern. You start in like you're going to the post and then you go back to the corner, but you better get Dwight Freeney blocked and they know that. That's what they do here. They get him and then and then he starts on a stunt. They just let him go and just push him right by. Jason David, the defensive back who's beaten on the play, Vinatieri ties the game. 16-yard touchdown. Brady on the drive. Six for six for 60 yards and a key fourth down conversion. A little less than six to play in the period, 7-7. Seven, seven. Kickoff, fielded at the two by Dominique Rose, who got off to a good start on his first run back, and this one pretty good as well as he brings it back out to the 33-yard line. Bill Belichick now in his sixth season as the Patriots head coach, fastest touchdown. His teams have given up. It only took 230 for Manning to get him down the field. Now Indy with the ball for the second time. They run that stretch play with James to the outside. He has some room and again averaging almost five yards per carry. And this is good for about six behind Glenn and Lilja on the left side. Edrin James. You know Tom Moore is trying to check out the way they played two tight ends. The first time the Colts had the ball they used all two tight ends. This time they start this series with three wide receivers. And then, and then what the Patriots did, they went to nickel, five defensive backs. Three receivers here. That's Stokely, 83 in the slot. Second down and three. They run the stretch to the right side. And this is James. And Adrian James picks up a first down. Quickly, the New England defense. Minus Rodney Harrison gone for the season. Minus Richard Seymour again. He is an actor for the fourth game in a row. Manning throwing to the right side. And that pass is knocked away by Asante Samuel. So Samuel and Harrison locking up again, and this time it's a Samuel able to knock it down to make it second down. And yeah, they're always talking about who was going to play safety for the for the Patriots, and it's Randall Gay playing there tonight. That's Asante Samuel. 
He gets him turned, but it's not that Samuel is able to come out of it. You know, turn and then get back and get back to that ball. First incompletion of the game. Double slot here. Second down and ten. James is the running back. The fake to him off play action and Manning under pressure. Gets it to James, but he's going to get wrapped up. Stopped first by Vince Wilfork, and the flag comes in for the first time in the game. So we played over ten minutes without a penalty, and now Bernie Kukar will make his presence known. Yeah, we always talk about that, but that really impresses me when a nose tackle makes a tackle on a screen mm -hmm. pass. I mean, that means that you're turning and running back. You, know, you see a Holding pass rush. 78 offense, penalty is declined. Third down. Yeah, you start to start to rush the passer, and then you feel screen, and you stop your pass rush. So you go for it. The minute he starts upfield, then he felt or saw screen. He ran right down the line of scrimmage. Penalty on Tarek Glenn. That's a 325-pound nose tackle. Will Fork, the number one pick in 2004. Third and 13. Crowd is spirited. Crowd is standing. Manning out of the shotgun. Under pressure again. Fires to the left side. And that is caught. Where is forward progress is the question. Reggie Wayne makes the catch, but his forward progress does not net him a first down. He had to come back to get the ball. And thus, it's not a first down. It's at the New England 46-yard line, fourth down. And you're going to see the line is going to be in there. You see Reggie Wayne, he started, he, he was about three three yards beyond the line, but then to get open, he had to work back. Now, you can't say that you know he should have stayed up. He should have kept the first down. He had to work back to get open to catch the ball. Well, they will at least line up to go for it. They quickly come to the line of scrimmage. The play clock is down to two, one, and now Manning is going to take a timeout. And they figure they get the punting group in. We'll see. 7-7 is the score. 3.15 left in the period. After a timeout, Tony Dungy's team will line up to go for it on fourth down and one. Big, big gamble if they snap it here. They had called the timeout. New England gambled and won, but that was at the 21-yard line. This is near midfield. Will they snap it? And they do. And Adrian James appears to have it as he spins his way for a first down. James in his career has picked up a first down on fourth and one about two-thirds of the time. So a big, big gamble for Dungy, and Indianapolis is able to move the chains. And he has a fullback in front of him and James Mungro, and you're going to see number 23 just lead him right through the hole. He doesn't block anyone, but he kind of rings it open for him a little. I think that answers the question earlier, really, Al, that I think both coaches have to feel that this is a shootout now, that it's going to be a shootout, and if that's the way it's going to end up, let's start it that way. And they've proven it. First and 10, 44. Fake inside give, and then James stays in to block McGinnis, and the pass for Clark is incomplete. Dallas Clark, the tight end, going down the sidelines. It'll be second down and 10. One of the things that the, that the Colts are thinking tonight is they want to they want to spread spread Dallas Clark out a little. You know, usually they keep him in tight, or when they keep him in tight, then that then that strong side linebacker like McGinnis, like he is right here, will jam him. To get him away from the jam, they're going to split him a little. Second down and ten from the 44-yard line. To the outside goes James around the corner. And Edwin James picks up about eight yards on the play. It'll be third and short. Randall Gay, the safety, comes up to make the hit. One of the things that we were talking about, Teddy Bruschi, the other day, on this play right here, the stretch, they have to set the edge. In other words, the edge is right here. You have to get up here so that he can't get outside. They didn't get the edge set up hard, and then and then Edwin James was able to get outside of him. Third and a deuce. Manning in the gun. Under two minutes to play. In a very spirited opening period. Manning softly over the middle. Caught by Wayne. First down. Reggie Wayne to the 29 yard line. Perfect yeah, I was down on, to Harrison. I was just going to say Al I was down on the field tonight when Peyton Manning come out and I've I've seen Peyton Manning come out on a lot of fields before a lot of games and 
You know, he's a competitor. He's always been focused. I have never, ever seen him like he was tonight. You know, at some point, I mean, he's a great competitor, and I know that he's starting to take this stuff personally. You know, the Brady, Peyton Manning, the, you know, you can't beat the Patriots. This guy is as focused as a guy can be tonight. He wants to put a lot of that to rest, there's no question, because Manning, a tremendous start to his career, obviously. False start. False start here. 78 offense. Five yard penalty. He has all the numbers. He had 49 touchdown passes last year. It's a Hall of Fame start to a tremendous career. The royal family, of course, with Father Archie and Brother Eli playing very well. But the whole, the whole thing with Manning becomes, how come you can't beat New England? Yeah, and he doesn't want to hear, why can't you win? First and 15. Flushed out. He's going to keep it. And he's going to step out of bounds. At about the 25 yard line, he was chased that time from behind by Ty Warren, the defensive end, to illustrate 119 previous starts. In his career, he's won 61% of the time, 73 and 46. But there it is, 2 and 8 against the Patriots. And, and as I said, I mean, he has so much pride. And he's such a great player and such a great competitor. He doesn't want to hear this stuff. And the only way to not hear it is to win a game here. Second down and seven at the 26 yard line. James will take it to about the 21 on what should be the final play of the period. The teams will change ends here as the seconds tick down. But a good, crisply played, active first quarter Brady threw a touchdown pass Manning threw a touchdown pass and we played 15 minutes in Foxborough with the score Indianapolis 7 New England 7 and Monday Night Football resumes after this message and a word from our ABC station Dallas Clark the tight end is in the backfield right here Patriots are in a 3-3 nickel, five defensive backs. Manning, a lot of time. To the outside, he goes, and Dallas Clark comes out of the backfield, makes the catch, and has the first down before he's hit by Asante Samuel. Now, if you give Peyton Manning anything, he's going to find it. As you said, he had three wide receivers. He looks at the coverage. He has Dallas Clark right next to him. Clark fakes like he's going to block, goes out there, runs just enough pattern to get a first down. And then he's lucky he held on to that thing. I mean, Asante Samuel really leveled him. His first catch of the night, 17th of the season. And James will get taken down. Ty Warren is the first to hit him. You know, for, for Manning, I, you, you take a look at this as James just carried for the 2,000th time in his career. You know, you've got maybe the most cerebral quarterback against the defensive genius in Belichick. Back and forth will go all night long. And, and those are great matchups. I mean, that neither one is going to give anyone anything. And as Bill Belichick says, if you ever leave anything open, anyone think he's going to find it. That's why you don't see many teams blitz Peyton Manning. He'll get you. Short drop, quick throw. Wayne makes the catch. Ball juggled for the moment, but he holds on very close to a first down. Dwayne Starks, eighth year out of the University of Miami, makes the tackle. And he's kind of a malign guy here in New England. And if, if you're going to work on any of their defensive backs, it's Dwayne Starks. And, and one thing that they've been able to do is to be a very physical defense, but these corners aren't as physical as they used to be. And Starks didn't help himself by telling the media, I'm not a physical corner. <laughs> yeah. They want to forget it. Yeah, not here in New England. Uh -uh. Here's James picking up the first down as he takes it to the five yard line. And so this is a drive that has consumed almost eight minutes. Now the Patriots in the red zone this season. Take a look at that. They were very very good in 2003 and four but tied for last with Buffalo right now. Seventy percent of the time when the opposition gets inside the 20 they get a touchdown. Well, you take Richard Seymour out of there and that is a big loss. Three more guys I mentioned Rodney yeah, Harrison. Rodney Harrison, yeah, Rodney Harrison is like a defensive back, linebacker, defensive. You take 
Those two guys, they're big red zone guys. 16th play of the drive is James getting about half the distance to the goal line. They'll spot it near the two. Yeah, we were talking to, to Peyton Manning last night, and, and he was talking about Rodney Harrison and saying that when Rodney Harrison played, you always had to had to key him because even though they would play cover two and he would be deep, he had he had the ability to freelance. If you were going to run, he'd be up there against your run. If you were going to pass, he'd be deep against your pass. The injury for Harrison gone for the year. Second and goal. James is going to pull his way in for a touchdown. So a 17 play drive against the patchwork New England defense. We say patchwork with all the things that Belichick has had to do and Eric Mangini. And the second drive for Indianapolis tonight resulting in a second touchdown. Yeah, watch, he, watch your right guard right here, Jake Scott. He's going to get a good block on Teddy Bruschi, and they're going to come right in his hole. You see, he makes contact there, gets him going, gets him to the outside, and that gives Edron James the soft spot to get underneath. And the center just Saturday went to work and took care of Will Fork. Vanderjat for the point after. Indies had the ball twice, scored twice. New England once, scored once. 14 7 Colts. You know, and this is in an era that we never thought there would be a dominant team. You know, we thought that with free agency and all the players moving around, that that wouldn't be possible, what the Patriots have done. Then this kick is fielded at the 11 yard line by Bethel Johnson. And he brings it out to the 32. So Tom Brady will get the ball for only the second time in the game. 11.45 remaining in the half as you look at downtown Boston, about 30 miles to the north. Since 1950, that's the way they would stack up. The highest winning percentage for a starting quarterback, Otto Graham, is number one. Darryl LaMonica would be two. And Tom Brady, tonight making his 70th start, is 52 and 17, third best. And then in postseason, to go all he is in postseason, is 9 and 0. From the 32 yard line on first down, Brady throws to the outside. And that's Deion Branch making the catch for a pickup of about five. Nick Harper makes the tackle. So many times, you know, you get an anticipated game or a great fight that you can't wait for, and it just kind of leaves you a little flat. Pretty good beginning tonight. This this is a great beginning. Yeah, and the and the crowd was excited as heck, and then and then the Colts come and they go down to score and everything quiets down. And then, then the Patriots get the ball, then they go score, then the life comes back into place, and then and the Colts score again and now the Patriots. Riding the wave, Corey Dillon. And you know the way things have gone to this point this season, John, you, you would think that if New England pulls it off this year. This might be the best of those accomplishments considering all of the things that they've had to deal with in the first half of the season. Yeah I mean if they if they pull it off this year it'll be truly amazing. I I felt last year that they were a dominant team. I mean you would see them you know from the midpoint on you know it, it looked like they were the best team in the AFC Philadelphia the best team in the NFC. I don't feel that way this year about the Patriots. They lost only two games last year. They've already lost three this season. And you got a pass thrown to Daniel Graham on, in effect, a, a tight end screen for no gain. The line of scrimmage will remain the 36. It'll be fourth down, and in comes the punting unit. You know, the Patriots really rely on a screen. I mean, that's a that's a third down, a third down screen. I've never been a big fan of that, but I've never been a big screen guy either. Now, the Patriots will screen. I mean, you watch them in practice, and half their passes are screens. They screen to backs. They screen to tight ends. They screen to wide receivers. They screen on third and long on a play like that when they need it. Josh Miller, the left-footed kicker, to send it down Troy Walter's way. Good kick. That's a 55-yard boot fielded at the 10-yard line. There's also a flag down, and the return is to the 23-yard line. Flag is at the 40-yard line of the Colts. Now, this has not been a sloppy game either. You know, we were talking to to uh, Tony Dungy last night, and he was talking, you know, about more penalties this year. And he said there's more sloppy play this year. You know, he didn't blame the officials and. He kind of blamed the you know the players and the coaches for 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 sloppy play. 
this has not been a sloppy play game. Extremely well played to this point. And I would figure we see so many special teams penalties. Here's one here. Holding 28 during the kick will enforce the penalty from the spot of possession change half the distance of the goal first off. Marlon Jackson held Samuel up. But Manning is going to get the ball back and a seven point lead second period. Penalty on the run back and it's a pretty significant one because the ball was caught at the 10 yard line returned to the 23 but with a penalty it's taken back from the spot where the ball was fielded so back to the five yard line goes Indianapolis first and 10 Colts with their third possession. And Peyton Manning looked like he was Ball backing start. away from center, and he was. 18 offense. Half the distance to the goal. Still first off. You know, they always talk about the 12th man in the crowd, and this is where it's the toughest. Third and long, and when you're backed up, and the end zone is right behind you, it is very difficult to hear. Now, Peyton Manning, it looked like he forgot the snap count. You know, he called it on two and thought he said one. But he was the only guy moving. First and 12 now from the three. Manning, play action, throws, juggled, and then James is able to make the juggling catch to give them some breathing space out to the nine yard line, and Teddy Bruschi is there for the tackle. That was a good play by Edron James, just keeping it alive because Edron James was the guy that he faked to. And usually you just kind of run the play out and Ed Edward James stayed alive. He started running that edge play and then came back in. It was a heck of an adjustment. Second and six. We call Brewski, of course, the comeback king earlier. Had a mild stroke in the offseason. He pulled a hole in his heart. As James gets stopped here by Colvin, and it speaks to the Patriots' injuries this season, the guys they've lost. Look at that, the, the four defensive backs out for the season, Poole and Harrison starters. And on top of that, you add Bruce, you missed those six games before he came back. Matt White starting left tackle. Gay is back after missing four games. Seymour still missing tonight. Key defensive end. So on the defensive side, they've been decimated. But there is Bruski. A remarkable story, of course, coming back from what could have been a life-threatening thing but wasn't. Could have been a career-ending thing but wasn't. Third down and nine. And Manning throws and he converts, but there's a flag as that is caught by Brian Fletcher, one of the tight ends, momentarily a first down pending the call. You know what was interesting about that play, Al, that you don't see the Colts do a lot? They, they, they huddled up. So it was one of those things that... That, you know, because they were having a problem of communicating, Peyton Manning got everyone in the huddle. They called to play in the huddle rather than at the line of scrimmage. Illegal use of hands, 23 defense. That penalty is declined. First down. Dwayne hands to the face. Dwayne Starks hands to the face at the 22 to be a first down. Here's Starks. He's he's coming up and trying to get the jam. Now you try and get the jam on the shoulders. We got a pretty good jam, but that left hand it just went up to the face mask. On first down, that is caught, and that's Wayne moving to the outside, working one on one, going to work on Starks again. And with Marvin Harrison getting so much attention, you forget about a guy like Reggie Wayne, but he has turned into a very good wide receiver. You know, Peyton Manning was saying last night that Reggie Wayne is his most consistent receiver. I think we have a, a breakdown, you know, throwing the ball right side and left side. And they used to be heavy right side, and now they're balanced throwing outside right, outside left. Second and inches. And James gets those inches and about seven more yards as he takes it out to close to the 39-yard line before he's tackled by the safety Michael Stone. Yeah, we can talk about the quarterback and the receivers and the tight ends, but this offensive line and this running back are something special, too. I mean, they're really making holes for Edron James, and he has holes on the stretch play. Here he has holes on the cutback. They just take that whole left side and collapse it so that Edron James can cut back. James has already carried the ball 14 times, caught it twice. To the outside, they go to Fletcher. Again, Fletcher up to the 45-yard line. It'll be second down and four. Eugene Wilson makes the tackle. I think, you know, we talked about Tony Dungy wanting to get ahead, play with the lead. 
I think for this reason now you can keep this Patriot defense off balance. I mean you know, are you going to run are you going to pass you use three wide receivers four wide receivers who you split your tight end out the, the Colts right now have great balance and mixture. They move from their five to the forty five yard line coming off their last drive which was a nine minute drive and now James cannot get to the outside because Roosevelt Colvin who made a very big play last week to help bring them from behind and beat Buffalo stops them ex bear. They were talking about how they how the Colts like to run that stretch play to the numbers and then what the Patriots want to do is set a hard edge. Colvin right there sets a hard edge in other words where you're playing on their side of the line of strength. You see Colvin get him in the backfield just push everything back and Edwin James can't get to those numbers. Colvin born and raised in Indianapolis and went to school in Indiana at Purdue. Third down and six at the 43 yard line. Manning out of the shotgun and everybody moving and the wrong guys are moving because Tyreek Lynn was moving. Yeah, and that's that's the old silent count. You know, when the quarterback moves his leg like that, he was going on two. Tariq Glenn left on one. The ball came out on three, I think. Delay a game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Peyton Manning knew that he had to get the ball snapped because he's the guy you see him look up. He looked up at the clock and, and then he looked up at the clock twice and said, Come on, give it to me. Was Tariq Glenn must have heard that too, or he may have been watching the clock. Saturday waiting until Saturday to snap it. Third down and 11 at the 38 yard line. Play clock goes all the way down to two. Manning under pressure, throwing, intercepted at the 50 yard line by Mike Vrabel. Mike Vrabel, who's made so many big plays through the years, most of them, of course, defensively, occasionally offensively, touchdown in the Super Bowl, and Manning has him moving down the field and then throws one right into Vrabel's numbers. You see Vrabel here. He's uh, he's on Dallas Clark and he's playing. He's jamming him at the line of scrimmage. He knows he has help over the top, so he is going to trail him underneath. Now Peyton Manning gets a little rush here, a little push. He not only moves sideways, but he moves backwards. And I'll tell you, and, and that he just threw that ball short. Great play by Mike Vrabel. At the 47 now. After it was starting to look as if New England couldn't stop Indianapolis, they get the big play, and there's Brady turning his shoulders. The ball is loose and free, and it's recovered by New England back at the 29-yard line by Tom Ashworth, the right tackle. But Brady is so good at avoiding the rush. Raheem blocked that time, 79 coming in with that shoulder move, but this time it loses the ball, and they're lucky to recover. Yeah, because usually when he makes that shoulder move, he can also step up. You see he has the play action pass and as he goes to step up Raheem Brock just grabs him and throws him to the ground. The, you know the thing that slowed him up a little there Al was the play action fake you know that that will delay you a little making that fake and then when he came out of it Brock was right on him. Brock beat Ashworth and then Ashworth got back there after an 18 yard loss at second down. 28 right now and it's Daniel Graham making the catch and he can only get back to the 34 yard line that's a gain of five it'll be third down and 23. Now the Patriots have two rookie linemen on the left side and I think they thought that's where they were going to get the pressure from their left offensive side but they've really been getting it from the right side. And Stephen Neal over there and Tom Ashworth that seemed to be having more trouble than Kazier and Mankins the two rookie left tackle and right tackle I mean left tackle and left guard Colts have run 30 plays this is only the 17th for New England Brady needs 23 and Brady's going to get it as he hits David Givens who gets free down the left side for a first down that's what makes Tom Brady great is you can have a bad play you can have things not go well you can get a, a bad pass rush you can get all these things but you just hang in there you just hang in there and keep playing again that was that cover two and, and, and they get behind the corner and in front of the safety see David Givens once he gets beyond that corner 
then he's going to have a hole before he gets to the safety. Jason David, who got burned on the touchdown earlier, gets burned there. They pick up 35 on the play. And now Corey Dillon will get bottled up near the line of scrimmage. Three and a half to go in the opening half. Dwight Freeney getting a blow. Yeah, and this is this is a time that you would think that the that the Colts would love to have Dwight Freeney in there. In fact, uh, they looked like he was going to go in there, and then, then he he stopped. But but this is when you have to have him. You know when you you know you want him on one side. Now you know that you have Robert Mathis on this side, but the two of them together can be lethal. Second down and nine. Fake toss to the left. Give it to Dillon. And Corey with some tough running for a first down to the 18 yard line. Brackett and Doss combine on the hit. That's that old, that's that old Ram play where you, you you fake the ball to the receiver and then hand hand the draw. You see him fake it out there to the left, reverse pivot, and then come back and hand it to Corey Dillon. That's a pretty good fake. It sure opens things up in the middle. You go back just enough to invite the pass rush up a little. Then you, you fake like you're going to throw it and then hand it to your back. And by that time, the middle is open. Seven carries for Dillon. 26 yards. He gets it again. This time there's no gain. And the ball is loose. The ball is loose and it is picked up by Jason David. Now it is still loose at midfield. There has been no whistle as it comes all the way down to the 30-yard line, and Mike Doss winds up with the football. And there's an official way back here on the 25-yard line pointing to a spot as the ball is down. He's saying bring it back to the 20. He's going to bring it back to the 27-yard line. Belichick has come out the onto the field. On the field. The runner was down by contact. Down by contact. There you go. Whoa, Whoa baby. What a break. That. What a break for New England. Yeah, Bob Sanders knocked that ball out of there again, down by contact. Well, that can't be challenged. He might be, well, he's, he might not be talking about Dylan. He might be talking about Jason David. Who is he talking about? If he's talking about Dylan, it's New England's ball. Not to be challenged. If he's talking about David, that's a different story. So now they have to huddle up again. Which runner does he mean? You know, you know who started that thing was Monte Rager. I mean, he got he got so much penetration there. Right there, you see him. He almost got to Tom Brady before the handoff. The key, the key thing here is if he said Dylan is down, that's it. Not to be challenged. That means the whistle had blown. If he means David, who comes up with a fumble like right there, that's a different story. So Bernie's going to clear it up for us. Who's ball? And you can tell that Indy thinks it's theirs, and you would assume it will be. Indy knows it's theirs. It was recovered by Indianapolis, and that runner was down by contact. First down, Indianapolis. Exactly. First and ten after the Dillon fumble. New England giving it up. Indianapolis starts from the 27-yard line, so the team's trade turnovers. Indy leads by a touchdown. Manning, final play before the two-minute warning, and it's caught by Harrison. Marvin Harrison steps out of bounds at his own 43-yard line. And with 2.02 on the clock, they'll wind it here after a 17-yard gain. And that will take us to the two-minute warning. 120 seconds remaining in a good first half in Foxborough. 14 to 7, Indianapolis. You know, one of the things Tony Dungy wanted from his defense was to be more physical. One of those guys that is more physical is Bob Sanders, and he's the guy that knocked that ball out on that fumble with Corey Dillon. Created it, and then you've got Manning throwing, and that is caught by Wayne. He takes it to the 36 yard line, looking ahead each team with two timeouts, so a ton of time for Manning as he moves the ball 20 yards downfield, first down at the 36. This is a real advantage to the Colts because they're always in a hurry up offense or in no huddle. Manning over the middle again, that's caught, that's another first down, and Brandon Stokely gets into the action. Stokely makes the catch. He's out of bounds at the 24-yard line, his first grab of the evening. 
you know, we're seeing something right here that Bill Belichick was talking about the other day. He said that these guys always seem to have good field position. He said Peyton Manning in this offense can swing field position faster than any team in the NFL, and we're seeing it happen right now. And the other point he made, they don't punt very much. You don't see much of the punting unit as you look at the films of their games and Indianapolis noted for Manning and not only ball control but a lot of offense and you don't see their punter very often because usually when he does get his his completions they're they're a pretty good chunk and then, you know it's a good combination Edger and James running you're know, getting chunks running and then getting bigger chunks in the passing game and quickly moving the ball down the field no punch tonight for Indy one for New England the ball at the 24 yard line with a minute and 28 it's second down and 10 and Manning will swing it to the outside and that's what Harrison comes back to make the catch and they will mark it a little short of a first down you know that's the thing about Peyton Manning and, and that's what Bill Belichick was talking about the other day and it's so true we're seeing it right here if there is something or someone open he is going to find it third and one Snap it quickly this time. Give it to James, and he moves inside the 10. He, he's down at the eight-yard line. It'll be first down and goal. You know, Peyton Manning said the way they're playing him now is uh, he didn't think it's just something this year. He said they started last year. You know that 49th TD, playing him. You know, not be the one that gives up the TD, playing the run soft. James runs into his own man, and that slows him up. And down he goes. Ryan Lilja. The left guard got involved in the action. It'll be second down and goal with a half a minute to go. Well, you hate that as an offensive lineman. <laughs> you're pulling out there. You, you never get mentioned you know, unless you hold or something. And then and then you're starting to pull and your back runs right into you. Second down and goal. They haven't taken a timeout on this drive. They're going to leave New England with nothing. And Manning will throw. And that is incomplete. Over the top of Brandon Stokely. Ty Warren put the pressure on. With 14 seconds now, it's third down. Uh, Ty Warren is a guy that doesn't get mentioned a lot for these Patriots, but is a very good player. He's a very explosive player. You know, I mean, in about two steps, he's halfway to the quarterback. 14 seconds, third down. New England trying to limit them to a field goal attempt. Dominique Rose comes into the game, and New England's going to take a timeout. You know, one thing, one thing that this hurry up offense or no huddle offense does is it really tires the defense down, and you can just feel that the Patriots are getting tired now. Brady's pitching a perfect game, but right now his team is trailing by seven. And New England trying to limit that lead at halftime to ten by setting up a field goal to be third down and goal here at the ten yard line. Rhodes in the backfield, flanking Manning. Four-man rush. Manning throwing, and Reggie Wayne spins around and is able to make the catch and stays in bounds. Touchdown. I Reggie don't know Wayne. if he wasn't wow. juggling the ball, though, as, as he was spinning around there. Peyton Manning put it there perfectly. You watch him. He just puts that ball up there. Reggie Wayne gets it, spins around. I don't know if he has complete control of it, though. Again, you've got no challenge here. You've got the guys upstairs would have to stop it. Juggling ball is still moving around a little bit. And where is he in relation to the end zone? I don't know. I mean, to me, that's a catch. You know, we're always looking when a guy catches the ball to find out why it's not a catch or a fumble why it's not a fumble that was a great throw and catch Indies run 39 plays New England's run 20 time of possession about 17 and a half minutes for Indianapolis and a little less than 12 and a half to this point for New England Manning has led him on those three drives Harrison talking things over with Starks on the bench and Reggie Wayne with that spinning grab in the end zone to make it 21 7. Didn't you feel at the end of that drive though that the that the Patriot defense was was really spent. Absolutely. And Manning can make you feel I mean the way he moves and the quick pace because he makes you be ready all the time. No breather. 
That's what Johnson takes it from the eight back up to the 32. Time for one play for Brady. Indy's first four possessions tonight. Touchdown, touchdown. Then the pick after they've moved 33 yards. Manning throwing it to Vrabel. Then they start in their own 27 following the Corey Dillon fumble. And that results in an Indianapolis touchdown. Now that's not a bad formula if you if you give up a turnover get one right back and then you're even and that's what they did and if you look at the secondary on the bench it'll be a kneel down by Brady and that's going to end the first half and so the Colts trying to get rid of their Patriots paranoia lead it at the half it's 21 7 the Owen suspension Tim McGraw Jimmy Kimmel coming up on the Lexus halftime show after this message from the NFL and a word from our ABC stations. Bethel Johnson back to receive for New England. So New England has Tom Brady go 10 for 10 in the first half, and yet they are down by two touchdowns. Raiders kick. Fielded six yard line. Bethel Johnson to try to give him a charge to start the second half, but instead, very good coverage by Indianapolis, and he's tackled at the 21 by Kelvin Hayden. Let's go to Sam Ryan. Sam. Uh, Al, I caught up with a frustrated Bill Belichick at the half. I asked him, What are you going to do defensively to slow down their offense? He said, We just have to play better. I said, How so? He said, Just play better. We can't wave a magic wand. As for Tony Dungy, he said he's happy with his offense. They look sharp, they look focused. As for his defense, he said they just seemed a little too hyped up, a little too wired. Left it off the hook a couple times on third and long. He said, We have to tackle better, and we have to play a full 30 minutes, Al. And they came up with a, a big turnover there when it looked like the Patriots moving in for what would have been the time touchdown. And that's Brady's first incomplete pass of the night intended for the tight end Ben Watson. You know, and that's what Bill Belichick has to be talking about now to the Patriots. OK, you know, let's get out there. Let's start establishing you know, some offense, get some first downs, do those kinds of things. And then on defense, we have to be a little more aggressive. We have to go after the ball. We have to get turnovers because usually when the Patriots would beat the Colts, the Patriots got the turnovers. Colts helping to beat themselves a lot over the past few years when they faced New England. Four and 21, second down and 10. Brady has a lot of time and then fires over the middle into traffic, and that pass intended. Where Daniel Graham is incomplete. Yeah, David Thornton, the linebacker, going back there along with Mike Doss for the coverage. You know, the one thing Tom Brady said he has to do in this game is he has to look off the linebackers. And the linebackers he's talking about are Cato June and David Thornton. And he does that. You see him not come to the receiver that he's going to throw to until he looks the other way and then come back. And hit Graham there. Graham has to catch that one. Third down and 10 from the 21. Brady out of the gun. Five receivers go out. And that's thrown into traffic, and it's incomplete. And again, you had double coverage here as Gary Brackett and some help on Daniel Graham. It'll be fourth down. So three and out very quickly for the Pats. You know, when we look at this cover two and we talk about it, the big thing is getting that middle linebacker down the middle deep. And you see Brackett, he knows that he has two. He has the, the second receiver in. So there'll be a flanker on one side. Number two is a tight end. He just waited for him and ran down the middle of the field with him. Now Miller to kick after a 22-second three and out. Fair caught by Troy Walters. So after Brady had gone 10 for 10, he goes 0 for 3. Indy has the ball. Here comes Manning. He leads by 14. And the aerial coverage tonight being brought to you by Budweiser. Looking into Gillette Stadium, Foxborough. Indianapolis has the ball at its own 40. Peyton Manning, his first possession of the second half. And they begin it with an Edger and James run for a gain of a couple. So with the mix and match defensively now for New England, Randall Gay, who is starting at safety, now moves over to right corner. They're going to sit Dwayne Starks down and put Mike Stone in at safety. I think Mike Stone at safety is either the fifth or sixth 
safety that the Patriots have had there. And again, they haven't been happy with Dwayne Starks all year. So this is something. This is probably Randall Gay's position anyway. Manning. Running to the outside. He'll get run out of bounds, but he's able to pick up enough to make it a third and fairly short. Wolfwalk runs him out. Take a look at how the Colts' key guys have done to this point in the game. Peyton Manning, a very efficient and effective first half with 181 yards and two TDs. James carried the ball 18 times, 3.0 average. And Harrison with four grabs and a touchdown. Third and three, shotgun. I don't know if Stokely's caught a pass yet, has he? He caught uh, one. One for 12 yards toward the end of the first half. And uh, it's a good call. <laughs> you were looking for Stokely, and so was Manning for a first down on a third down play. Well, you know, he's he's the inside receiver. He's the slot. He'll be right or left, but he's always the inside guy. And, and that's a guy that Peyton Manning likes to go to, especially if they're going to double the outside receivers. And that's what we call an option route. He'll start inside. If the defender plays him inside, he goes back to the outside like that. If the guy plays him outside, then he would go to the inside. First and ten, the ball is at the 40-yard line. Clock at one. And Manning tries to call a timeout, and I'm not sure he got it. That's a problem. You know, they don't huddle up, but he still Play takes game. darn near the whole Offense. time at the line of scrimmage. Still first on. And you see on this one, he gets up there over center or under center, and then he goes back and gets in shotgun. He gives the one, you know, and the ball doesn't come, tries to get the timeout, and that doesn't come. So now first and 15, two and a half minutes into the second half. I don't think first and 15 bothers him. No, not Manning. He's going for a lot more than 15, and it is almost intercepted. Marvin Harrison, the intended receiver, and Asante Samuel step for step with him. Hey, you know, that's not a bad thing because you think after you have the penalty, okay, you're going to go back and try and get some of it back. Not Peyton Manning, not the Colts. If you get one-on-one -on, -one on Marvin Harrison out there, he is going to run the deep pattern on you. Peyton Manning just threw that a little short. Martin, uh, 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 Marvin Harrison had a step on Sam. Got behind him, and the ball hung, and it's second down and 15 at the 45-yard line. To the outside. Harrison makes the catch. Tom Moore, the offensive coordinator, talking about Moore really sending in concepts more than plays. And by the way, happy birthday to Tom at 67 tonight. And he he does a great job. I mean, you talk about a, a team and the, the team of Tom Moore calling the plays along with Peyton Manning is a is a is a great offensive team. And his offensive coordinator for all of Peyton's eight years since he was the number one pick in the draft overall out of Tennessee. And Manning's going to run for it, and he's going to get it. And he's going to slide to a stop at the 23-yard line. So Manning takes off and keeps the chains moving on a 12-yard scamper. You know, I was talking earlier about Peyton Manning, how, you know, seeing him on the field. is He had such focus. I'd never seen that before. I mean, he had a look. And, and you know that in this game tonight, whatever it takes, he's going to do. He's not a big runner with a ball, but if you give him a gap tonight, he is going to take it and run with it. And one thing they've done brilliantly is convert on third down. They're 9 of 11 on third down. Ball with the 24-yard line. Here goes James, and James with some tough running. Gains time before Bruschi finally stops him second and short upcoming. He ran so hard he knocked his socks down. <laughs> but uh, he is a powerful guy, and 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 the way that he can get down low and keep his power to me is amazing. You know, you know, he's not a high runner. He's always down. And then and then at the end of the run, he'll get down even lower and always keep those feet moving. Second and one. James again. And James is going to pick up enough for a first down before Colvin makes the tackle. That'll move the chains again. Ball at the 13-yard line. 
you think of all the times that Bill Belichick is, has played against this Colt team, they would they would have the lead and it was like he always had their number. I mean, he kind of knew what they were going to do and he had a guy or two there. You don't feel that their defense has the number of the Colts tonight. And how much of that is the injury situation? They don't want to use it as an excuse, but when you're missing Harrison and Seymour and guys like that, you pay a price. On first and ten, that is caught by Marvin Harrison. He takes the ball to the six-yard line. Teddy Bruschi, of course, missing all of the action this season until last week. A lot of questions, obviously, concerning whether he would ever play football again after the surgery. But he attended all of the meetings. He was cleared by the doctors. Bob Kraft was very careful to make him go to a lot of outside doctors. Talked it over with his wife. Back he comes. He was saying that his wife wanted to just make sure anytime you make a tackle, get up first. <laughs> yeah. Second and two at the six yard line. James for the short side of the field and nothing happening there. So they go from second and two to third and about three and a half as Willie McGinnis makes the hit. Again, we talk about the stretch play that the Colts are trying to run to the numbers and the the edge that the Patriots are trying to set. Willie McGinnis, when you run the play to the right, Willie McGinnis is the outside guy who's going to set the edge right there. Third and four, they run on a quick count here, and you've got a flag as James comes up a yard shot, but there's a, a marker at the nine-yard line. So Manning got up there and snapped it very fast. Well, Lillian. you know, that's what he does if they're trying to substitute, you know, because they think that going no huddle, you shouldn't be able to substitute on him. If you try and substitute, he has a word. He just goes, attack, attack, and then they go up there and snap the ball. Bernie Kukar. Offside on the defense. That man did not get off the field, and he was offside. Half the distance to the goal, first down. You see, that's that's what it was. He he saw him try and substitute. You see, he sees that. He just goes attack, attack, and they just snapped the ball. And he knows he's going to catch him with too many men in the field. The other thing that he does down here is that direct snap. You know that deal where he looks like he's going back and forth talking to his line, and then they just snap it to the back. That was New England's first penalty tonight. And a most inopportune time. And the ball is given to Dominique Rhodes, who has come in for James. And Rhodes is across for a touchdown. Dominique Rhodes gets to the goal line and in. So Indianapolis converting on third down time after time. Opening drive for them in this half. And now Brady and the Patriots are in a three-touchdown hole. Dominic Rhodes again is a is a good runner and can run with that same type of power. I mean when you're when you're down here there's not a lot of moves. You can make one cut and then you run downhill. There's a cut now run downhill right to the goal line and get as low as you can with your same power. Vanderjat for the point after four times have the Colts been in the red zone. Four times have they scored touchdowns from the red zone. 836 remaining in the period. 28 to 7 Colts. You know, as you look down into Gillette Stadium, that, that strip in the middle where there's no grass is ugly. Very. They play soccer here, but I think that might be more football related. This kick is fielded at the 15 by Bethel Johnson. And he brings it back up to the 27-yard line where Rob Morris plants him. Sometimes statistics lie, but not those. That's your ball game right there. Yeah, well, you know, just looking at and saying this this Patriot defense looks dead tired. And then when you look, you know, how many how many plays they've been out there and how long they've been out there, this cold offense has just worn them down. Now Brady's going to throw to the outside, and Troy Brown is going to not be able to make the catch inbounds. Tony Dungy, if he gets a big lead, well, he doesn't cough it up very often. Tony threw his career and of course he had the six years at Tampa and now four in Indianapolis 50 and oh when he has a 14 or more point margin you know you think of all those years at Tampa he always had a, a good running game and a good defense and that'll allow you to it now he has a good running game good passing game and a pretty good defense but 
can he get through the Monday night kibosh or oh, yeah. kibosh? That, he's every time we do that, not every time, but a lot. We'll put something like that up, and the next thing you know, hello? Right. But I think that, I mean, I think that Tony Dungy has that for a reason, because I think that's, that's the kind of coach he is. I mean, he's all about fundamentals, being solid, techniques, those kinds of things. Third down and eight at the 29-yard line. The Patriots' last drive was three and out and a little bit more than 20 seconds. And this one, at least they convert on, so they move the chains as Ben Watson, the tight end, makes the catch going straight down the field. And the ball is at midfield as we go to Sam. And now you're talking about the Colts' defense. Well, Corey Simon brings experience and leadership to the defense, having played against the Patriots with the Eagles in the Super Bowl. He told me the main thing is keeping these guys grounded. He said, our schedule gave us the opportunity to have success early, but up until this point, we hadn't played anyone yet, hadn't played the Patriots. They still have to play the Steelers. He told me this defense has not played well enough to win a Super Bowl. They need to tackle better. He said, we haven't done anything yet before tonight's game. Simon. Contract impasse at Philadelphia became a free agent signed with Indy at the onset of the year. And this is tacked, caught by Ben Watson, who escapes the first tackle and then takes the ball to the 41 yard line, a couple shy of a first down. Indianapolis to this point in the season and where they rank. The opponents where the opponents rank in points per game and as you can see only the Rams who got off to a 17 to nothing lead against Indy in that Monday night game before Bolger got hurt among the really good offensive teams and Dillon well, he was well served to drop that one because he would have taken the loss Gary Brackett with the coverage it'll be third down yeah, but I, I'll say this about the Colts they are better I mean you know you can look at their schedule and say that you know that they haven't played any tough teams maybe they haven't but they've done what they've had to I mean they're they're an undefeated team they they knew that they had to be more aggressive they knew that they had to be more physical on defense they've gotten that they've gotten better there and they are a better team now you talk about Peyton Manning and what this game means to him and now he's focused just look at that shot third down and three here goes Dylan he's going to get a big first down here they need a good drive here to the 31 yard line. Stephen Neal helped to lead the way. First down for the Patriots. One thing about Corey Dillon, you know, after he has that, that turnover, I mean, you get so upset about it, you just want to get the ball in there and just run it right down their throat. I mean, you want to erase the bad taste of that turnover. And that was Dillon's first fumble of the year earlier when the Patriots appeared headed for a tying touchdown. Instead, Indianapolis went down the field to make it 21 to 7. Brady in the pocket. Brady gets hit. His arm got hit as he moved forward. Raheem Brock is there. He's been a pest all night to force the incomplete pass. You know, Raheem Brock is an interesting story. Remember, he was he was drafted by the Philadelphia Eagles, like in the seventh round. And they didn't have enough money. After they signed all their draft choices, they didn't have enough money for him. So they couldn't sign him. So they had to make him a free agent. He never went to camp with him. And then he ends up with the Colts. So here's here's a guy that would have been a Philadelphia Eagle had they just had a little more money. I guess it's tough to find money for in Indianapolis with Keith Payton and Edra and James and all those guys. But Daniel Graham takes it. He's inside the 20, inside the 10, and Daniel Graham gets New England back into the game. We talked earlier about that, that the Patriots run more screens than any team in football. And they don't just run them to the backs, they run them to everyone. They run them to wide receivers, and in this case to Daniel Graham, a tight end. You'll see him, he's on the right side. Tom Brady goes, fakes to the left, it twirls, comes back to Daniel Graham, where the screen is set up on the right side. And there's a great block by Stephen Neal to help pave the way and so the tight ends are very big on that drive the key third down completion to Ben Watson then Graham takes it into the end zone Vinatieri for the point after and they needed a good drive and they get it that's why they're the world champions 546 left in the third 28 to 14.
still have beautiful fall foliage on the 7th of November. And you've got an onside attempt here, and it's going to backfire with a flag thrown as Joseph Jefferson comes up with it. So Adam Vinatieri approaching it, and Bill Belichick deciding down by 14, he'd give it a shot here. And Indianapolis, pending this referee's or officials conference, should wind up with a ball in New England territory. You know, we were just talking about that with the defense being as, as tired as they are and, and not really able to, to stop this cold offense. This wouldn't be a bad time for an onside kick. And the most advantageous time is when it's a surprise onside kick. Offside on the kicking team. We will add five yards from where the play ended. First down, Indianapolis. Insult to insult. So Belichick with a big gamble. And of course, Manning now has a very short field with 544 left in the third. Bill Belichick lost his two coordinators. Romeo Cornell went to Cleveland. Charlie Weiss went to Notre Dame. Eric Mangini, who'd been the secondary coach, is the defensive coordinator, though Bill is the defensive guru. And that defense will really have to stick him here. After New England gets back in the game, the ill-fated onside kick, and Edron James takes the ball to the 19-yard line. You know, John, it, it's easy to second guess here. But you get back in the game, you have 20 minutes to go in the game. The downside of not recovering that onside kick and giving Manning that short field is enormous. Yeah, you don't want to do that. And then, you know, you just get some momentum and you'd like to play off that momentum. That's one hand. The other hand, I think he doesn't have a lot of confidence in his defense. He figures his defense is tired and he would like to get them some more rest. And if the thing works, you know, he would have been a genius. But I think it's as much about defense and maybe his matchup on defense with the cold offense it is anything else he doesn't he doesn't feel that they're matching up well right now that's a great point and a very telling point and who would have ever thought we'd be talking about Belichick losing a little faith in his defense well he's having trouble in that secondary you know he's already taken Dwayne Starks out there he started Randall Gay at safety then moved him to corner so Starks was beaten pretty well and, uh, and he doesn't he just doesn't have confidence in that second round. Third and seven the Colts are nine out of eleven converting on third down. They swing into the outside and they won't convert here but they will set up a Vanderjat field goal. That's Brandon Stokely making the catch. They'll spot the ball at about the 17 yard line and forthcoming will be roughly a 36 yard field goal attempt. So if Vanderjat makes this field goal then it was the gamble was a three point gamble. I mean he lost he lost three points. He, he loses three points but he also if Anderjet makes the field goal it goes from a two possession game to a three possession game. They're going to spot it at the 25 it's a 35 yard attempt. Hunter Smith will hold and Vanderjet sends it right down the middle. So the Colts tack on three more with 445 remaining in the third quarter. And Tony Dungy's team is up by a score of 31 to 14. So what happens if Indianapolis wins? Okay. They know they, they've kind of gotten over the hump, at least during the regular season. The other thing here, John, will be they almost certainly assure themselves of not having to come back here in the playoffs. They'd have a four-game lead over New England. They'd have one head-to-head. -head. So if New England is going to face Indy again, it would be in Indianapolis and of course you know what the media is going to start with next week Miami 1972 well you know I was talking to someone who told me that Bob Greasy says that that they usually don't start their you know watch until someone wins 10 games so they still have a couple more uh, for that I mean assuming that they win here tonight but you know as Tony Dungy was saying last night he said he tried to play this game down not if if, if they lose but if they win. He said, you know, he doesn't want them to think if they win, okay, that's it. Season's over. We're there. You know, I mean, he wants to, if you win, okay, we have to go go back to work and, you know, play the next one. And now if the if you lose, you know that you do that. You say, okay, we lost. Now we have to correct the mistakes and we have to go. But if you win, you know, they may think, hey, it's all over. We've done it. <laughs> that, that's what he's guarding against. The season's only halfway over for this team tonight, one way or another. Eight down. Here's another short kick. 
Well, they got Rayner as a kickoff specialist, and he's been short on almost every kickoff tonight. And that's Bethel Johnson bringing it back to the 32. Tackled by Sapp. Spotlight recap tonight. Here's Manning, his numbers. Two TDs and 211 yards. Harrison with a touchdown grab right there to get him started. James has carried the ball a total of 22 times, so he's been, as usual, the workhorse. Brady with a couple of touchdowns tonight and 166 yards. And then Daniel Graham helping to get them back into the game with that touchdown. So we'll see if the Pats can mount another big drive. Ball at the 31-yard line, and Brady will begin by throwing it over the middle. Caught near midfield. David Givens on the other end of that pass, and a first down. Boy, one thing about Brady, when he gets back there and that, and that last foot hits, that ball's coming out of there. And whether it's one, two, three, out, one, two, three, four, five, out. But watch when that, when that, when that right foot hits, that ball is on its way out. And he is very, very tough to rush. If he doesn't look at his receiver, he'll look off, then come back to him. When that back foot hits, it's gone. Swing pass to Dillon. Dillon avoids a loss. Turns it into a little game. Marlon Jackson couldn't tackle him, and he picks up about two to the 47 of the Colts. You know, Corey Dillon is one of those running backs. Uh, Emmett Smith was that way that always carries the ball in his left hand. You know, I mean, most running backs, they will carry the ball when they get to the sideline. They'll put the ball in the outside arm or outside hand so that if they do hit, the ball goes out of bounds. Corey Dillon always keeps it in his left hand. Second and eight. Dillon again playing on a fairly tender ankle. Patriots have not had a running game tonight. Brady will go to the air, and that's the way they're going to have to do it as David Givens makes the catch. It'll be third down and four from the 43-yard line. Cato June makes the hit. Well, you know, that's a formation that I thought they would use a lot of tonight if they can't run. And that's that empty backfield, five wide receivers, Brady getting back, being able to see the whole field, getting rid of it to the open guy quickly. You'd like to gain more yards than they did on that last one. Third down and four. The 43-yard line, under three minutes to play in the third. Colts up by 17. They led by 14 at halftime. Brady to the outside, and that is incomplete. Deion Branch, the intended receiver, and Marlon Jackson was in the neighborhood and might have gotten a piece of it. Now, if you're going to onside kick, then you might as well go for it on fourth down in this situation. And again, I think part of this is confidence in Tom Brady, and I think part of this is not having a lot of confidence in your defense against Peyton Manning. Put those two together, and they're going to go for it. Right. If you're going to make a play, make it here on offense. Fourth and four. Brady quickly, and the pass is incomplete. Real fast slant intended for David Givens. Nick Harper is there to break it up, and Manning's going to get the ball back near midfield. And Nick Harper probably anticipated that one because, remember, in the first half on, on fourth down, they went for it, and they went for that same thing, that quick slant out there. Nick Harper was right there with it. He didn't let him get inside. David Givens on that has to get to the inside, and Harper didn't let him get to the inside. From the 44, Peyton Manning with a 17-point lead and the ball. Two and a half to go in the third period. Manning. Deep down the right sideline, and it's caught by Reggie Wayne. So you would think... At a point in the game when the Colts might start to use the clock a little bit, Manning says, uh-uh, we don't have enough. It's a 29-yard game. Yeah, and that's Peyton Manning, and that's his cold offense, and that's Tom Moore, and that's the way they do things. When you think they're going to do something, they don't. If you give them anything, they're going to get it. That time it was, it was Reggie Wayne right there on Randall Gay. Now passes are more than 
20 yards beyond the line of scrimmage tonight. Manning, who's had a tough time on long passes this year, three out of five. Last year, of course, he was phenomenal on every kind of pass with 49 touchdown passes. But this year, they haven't been going deep that often, and they haven't been going deep that effectively until tonight. His two receivers tonight, 13 catches for the two of them as they approach a, a combined 200 yards and each for the touchdown. Well, he has so much confidence in, in Reggie Wayne now. I mean, we know that he's always had confidence in Marvin Harrison. Second down and eight at the 24-yard line. And there's Harrison making the catch. Spotted very close to a first down. You know, I think we were talking to Mar uh, to uh, Bill Belichick the other day about Marvin Harrison, and he says, "You ever remember that guy ever missing a game? I mean, it seems like every time you watch a coach, you watch him on film, you watch him on TV, Marvin Harrison is out there. I mean, there's not much to him. You know, I mean, he's he's a little guy, but he never misses. He never gets hurt. Neither does Manning. Manning's made every start of his career. He started as a rookie in the opening game, and tonight, number 120, first and ten. At the 16 yard line. James to the 12. Harrison playing, you know, you're talking about not getting hurt, but he has a cast. There it is. Of a brace, as Tony Dungy calls it, but he won't he won't talk to the doctors about this. No, he won't let him check it. I mean, he knows there's something wrong with his left wrist and it's hurt, but you're gonna play anyway, so why? Why get into medical terms about what's wrong with it? He won't even go into the training room. He won't talk about it. Denial. He won't it, talk about a lot of things. It works. Second and six. Waning seconds of the period. Manning, and that is dropped. It was right there in Reggie Wayne's hands, but it's incomplete. It'll be third down. You just fear Willie McGinnis getting closer and closer to him in the pass rush. And so Tony Dungy was saying last night, you know, he said that. He said Peyton Manning doesn't get hurt because he never gets hit by anything he doesn't see. You know, you know, here's Willie McGinnis coming on him now. You can't watch the rusher, but you have to know when he's close to get rid of the ball and then get ready to take that hit and fall. You, know, you don't get surprised by that thing you don't see. That's when you get hurt. Third down and six from the 12. Manning, good protection, finds the man over the middle. It's Brandon Stokely. He'll take it to the five, and then they'll change ends of the field and have first and goal when we resume. Fourth quarter, Al Michaels, John Madden, Sam Ryan, Foxborough, Massachusetts, 31-14, Indianapolis. ESPN Sports Center follows the game for a recap, interviews, and all of the rest. As Tony Dungy's team tries to stay undefeated, go to eight and zero, first and goal. Indy ball at the five yard line. James the running back. James to the two yard line. It'll be second down and goal for the Colts. You know, I hear people say, you know, why why does he do that? What's he doing up there in the line of scrimmage? Why does he talk so much about that? And and then some people say, well, he's not saying anything. It doesn't mean anything. Well, it does mean something. He's calling to play. So when you have have no huddle, then then you have to get up and call the play right there at the line of scrimmage. So all this, he has three plays. So he's calling one of three plays and then making an, a, an adjustment off that. He's the ultimate throwback. Games to the outside. And how many guys call their own plays? Meanwhile, there's no mystery in Indianapolis how it gets done. But there's a lot of mystery in New England as to who's calling the plays. There's Tom Brady. You got Brady, Charlie Weiss, who used to call the plays, is now at Notre Dame. And they haven't even named an offensive coordinator. No, and I think that Bill Belichick is, has taken more of that. And I think that the quarterback coach, jo Josh McDaniels, is the guy that calls the plays. He's on the mic in the Brady's helmet. Third down and goal for Manning now from the two. Manning, and he goes low. Intended for Reggie Wayne. So it'll be fourth down, and they're going to send Vanderjat and company out onto the field. Wayne is telling somebody he doesn't want to hear about something. Again, it's that slant, and it's and it's getting inside. And I'll tell you, these and, and Peyton Manning just threw that ball low, but these these wide receivers of the Colts, 
have really had their way with the secondary of the Patriots. Mike Vander Jaffer was a 20 yard attempt and it looked a little awkward but he bangs it through line drives it through to make it a 20 point game 34 14 early in the fourth. Humps. They aren't easy. So what's Peyton going to do tonight. He's going to do anything and everything to get over this thing. Dennis Quaid in our tease tonight, summing it all up, the hump. I mean, this hump's become a mountain, but they're climbing the mountain right now, and they can see the top of it, 34-14, Indianapolis. It's a mountain they've been carrying on their back, and it's going to be off there tonight if they keep going like this. Rangers take it's another short kick. Beckel Johnson runs it back to the... Yeah, I think they have to get over that T.O. hangover and get on to winning some games. And they began to, to do that today because Owens is done for the season with Philadelphia. That is Deion Branch making the catch out near midfield, and the Patriots will go without a huddle as they come up to the line at the 49-yard line. When you feel Tom Brady sometimes just makes it look so easy, you wonder why you didn't do that all night and go up and down the field and score yeah. touchdowns. They didn't have the ball enough is one of the reasons. Yeah, that's a, a, a big reason. Brady. That pass is incomplete because he had in, Indianapolis starting with that long drive, and then Brady answered. And then the Colts had another long drive. So 20 minutes into the game, it had the ball only one time, New England. Yeah, and, and that's going to be the thing, you know, because I've been in games like that, coached in games like that, and then you say why didn't we do this why didn't we do that why didn't we run more why didn't we pass outside more? why didn't we do this that, well the answer to all those is we didn't have the ball enough. second down and 10 to 49 to give it to Dylan on a draw and again really no running game tonight for New England Dylan's carried 11 times for 40 yards but they have only 34 net yards tonight on 13 carries. Well you know what usually goes with with a good running game is one being ahead and two good defense. The Patriots haven't had either one of those things tonight. Third down and three at the Indy 45. Pressure. Able to escape. Throw. Caught. Troy Brown, the venerable one. Brown now who can play both sides. He's a corner as well. 13th year in the league. First down. You know, Nick Casher, the, the rookie left tackle, has really done a pretty good job on, on Dwight Freeney out there tonight. I mean, I mean, they've been doing a lot of stunning and stuff, and Freeney almost got there, but but because they had the middle solid, Tom Brady was able to step up. At the 35, first down. Then the draw again on the inside handoff, but that doesn't fool anybody. And Mathis is the first guy there to stop him after a very minimal game. They should have run the draw right at Dwight Freeney. That's usually what you do when a when a pass rusher, it's an old NFL thing, when a pass rusher gets a sack or gets close to the quarterback and you're going to run a draw on the next play. You usually run it right at the guy that got there, and that was a big draw hole open to that side. Second and ten. Set up the screen. Dylan. Tough running. First down to the 23 yard line. Talking about Josh McDaniels before the young quarterbacks coach, even though. There is no designated offensive coordinator. He would be about as close to it as anybody. Well, you can see he's the guy that you know has the play sheet. So, so whoever has the play sheet is he who calls the play. <laughs> so it's an old ton of time. It comes down from the mountaintop. Flag is thrown because it looked like coming around the, the right side. Might have been Freeney. Jonathan Welsh actually number 99 who was the guy who either got a phenomenal start or an illegal one. I think the officiating tonight has been pretty good. It has been and you know we we've seen our share of 
officiating this year that could be classified from time to time as dubious. Ball start, number 77 offense. That's Nick Casher, who we were just talking about the rookie who was doing so well. You know, anytime, anytime after you get set, if the offensive the lineman moves a little, then that's movement. Just just watch his left arm right here. See, he's set there. He has to stay set. You see, just that little move mm -hmm. right there is what they call him because that's the move that got the pass rusher started. And that is a little move. And that's a sight you don't see a lot, folks uh, departing before the end of the game here. Well, these folks here haven't seen their team be behind like this 34 to 14 in the fourth quarter. Or lose very often. It was a novelty, especially here. 11 please, on the scoreboard clock. 11 07. It had that long home winning streak, Thank which you. ended against San Diego back on the 2nd of October. We were talking about there's only been eight total penalties tonight. Five on Indy and three on New England. So it's first and 15 now with the ball at the 29 yard line. Mike Cloud is in the game. Flanking Brady. He stays in the block. And the pass is caught at the 19 yard line by Dion Branch, who's covered by Jason David, about five yards shy of the first. And now Dwight Freeney comes back in. He has a he has a bad arch and he doesn't he doesn't practice a lot. And, and so therefore, you know, he can't go a lot of plays. So they he tries to pick his spot, you know, the you know, second long, third down, red zone where they need a play. Dwight Freeney will usually be in there. Second and nine or second and five as Brady's gonna back off into the shotgun. And the pass is caught by Brown for the touchdown. So Brady went to the line of scrimmage under center. Brain started to come in. He moved him back outside. He went into the shotgun and hits Brown for 19 yards and a touchdown. And that's the guy that you look for when you need a big play. Here he is in the slot. And Tom Brady was saying that he's just dependable and consistent. You know where he's going to be. Close. Look at Tom Brady there. He, he he looks off and then he pumps off and then he comes back to his receiver Troy Brown. But Dungy might think about challenging too late now. Vinatieri for the point after. So Troy Brown pulls one in and New England still breathing down by 13 with 10:15 to go. Coverage tonight provided by Budweiser after the Brown touchdown. Will New England onside kick it? Meanwhile, on the other side of the next commercial, we're going to show you. I said I was surprised Dungy didn't challenge that. And we'll take a look at an angle shortly where it looks like Brown did not make the catch. But that's all history now. Conventional kick fielded at the eight yard line by Dominique Rhodes. And he brings it up to the 26 yard line. And now. Can the New England defense get the ball back in a hurry? It's up to them to try to get him right back in the game. Tony Dungy was joined with the officials. We're going to go back and show you the Brown touchdown after this play. And I mentioned I thought he was going to challenge it, but he didn't, and he probably would have won the challenge. The ball is at the 26 yard line. Manning's going to start with a play action pass, and that's going to be caught by a wide open. Reggie Wayne go back to Brown's catch and you'll see an angle here where he'll make the catch and the ball is going to hit the ground right there they win the challenge it would have been no touchdown there was Tony with the flag but he puts it back in his pocket. And, and he's thinking now I should have reversed that yeah instead of coming in that should have gone out. Ball at the 44 yard line. Manning. And that's caught. And Wayne makes the catch, and that's a first down. So back to back to Reggie Wayne to the 44 of 
New England and Wayne has now caught nine balls for 124 yards. Harrison was seven for 101. You know, and they're catching them on all kinds of corners. I mean, they had Dwayne Starks in there, and they beat him. Then they took him out. Now they put Randall Gay in there, and you know, you know, and they're playing mostly zone. But whatever they play, they've really had a difficult time with these outside receivers. At the 44, Manning approaching 300 yards. He's a dozen shy of that figure. James. Good little hole. 39 yard line. And if you take Wayne and Harrison tonight, they've caught 16 combined catches. There's the first one, that, that big one to Marvin Harrison, the up. I mean, the post and then the quick up. And here's Reggie Wayne. You wonder why Dwayne Starks is out in the second half? Those are some of the reasons. <laughs> second and five at the 39, 8.15 to play. Ellis Hobbs is in the game at a corner. Rookie from Iowa State. He's the third guy to play that right corner now. And James gets stopped here. So you've got a very key defensive play here for New England. Third down. To the clock running down, you're still in the game, and Manning's going to get up to the line in a hurry. They tried to substitute. It's the yep. same thing. Any any time, any time they try and substitute, he goes attack, attack. That's that time, the timeout. Patriots got a timeout and forces New England to use its first of three. Manning against the Patriots. First five games, you see the numbers. Tonight, a whole other story. After the timeout forced by Manning trying to get the snap off, and New England trying to substitute, it's third down and two. And here is James, and that's a big first down because that's going to eat up another couple of minutes. It's going to get him into field goal range, and the ball is at the 30-yard line with a first down. Yeah, right in there tight behind the center, Jeff Saturday and Ryan Lilja, the the, the center and left guard. I mean, they get a pretty good takeoff right here, here, and here. They get a double team, and you see the guard, Lilja, comes right up on the linebacker. He gets to that second level, and that was really the plow that got the Edron James through there. It's quite a grimace on Jeff Saturday, wasn't it? <laughs> what the heck just happened to him? Manning using all the play clock, and you've got a whistle before the snap here. You know, when he catches him in that attack, attack on that snap is between second and third down. I mean, that's what he's always looking for. It. 78 offense. Five yard penalty. Still first off. Tarek Glenn was their number one pick out of Cal back in 97. Tarek Glenn has had about three or four of those. He yep. had a holding and a, and a couple of false starts. Unusual, but you know it's tough to be a Colt offensive lineman because you have to stay in your stance so long and be ready while Peyton Manning does all this stuff. First and 15. And parallel to that, John, tough to be a defensive lineman and stay in your stance while he's doing all that stuff. Yeah, that's the thing because you never know when he's going to snap it. You say, well, you can wait until he gets under there, and then they'll direct snap it. Or you can say, we, you know, you know, we have plenty of time, and then he'll see you try and substitute, and he'll go attack, attack, and go quick snap. So they, they, they do put their offensive line into a little bind, but they put the defense in a lot bigger bind. James is approaching 100 yards on the ground. Manning approaching 300 through the air, and Harrison already into triple figures, as is Wayne. Second and 10, and Peyton using all of the clock. Out of the pocket. Going deep. He's got his main man, and that's Marvin Harrison for the touchdown. 30 yards as he hits number 88 for touchdown. Number 88 between the two. You know, and that's why they do all that work. I mean, they know each other so well. Here you'll see it. 
He sees him out there. He's just looking for him all the way. He tried to pump it and then throw it, but he got a little pass rush, and he had to move out to the right, Peyton Manning did, and then he just gave it everything he had, and it ended up right in Marvison Harrison's hands perfectly. Add one to that total because 88 came earlier. This is his second of the night, so 89 times in their careers has Manning hit Harrison for a touchdown. Yeah, you know, he kind of gave him a double move, and that's when he tried to tried to pump it because he got the pass rush. He had to get to the outside, but they came in a blitz. They covered man to man, and you can't do that to Marvin Harrison. And the crowd is booing because the Colts line up to go for two to try to make it a 21 point lead instead of a 20 point lead. And now you've got a flag. You've got a challenge flag from Belichick <laughs> challenging Indianapolis for going for two. But Belichick must have seen something that we didn't see. Because the challenge would have to be on uh, Marvin Harrison's touchdown catch. That's the last play. And Harrison can't figure it out. So we've been looking at the replays, and there's nothing that's going to overturn this. The, the touchdown will count. Belichick could have been penalized for attempting. After revealing the play, it is a catch. It is a touchdown. Charge timeout, New England. You can't. You can penalize a coach for throwing a, a challenge flag without a challenge. So it's possible. I'm just going to surmise. He throws the flag. He's told he's going to be penalized because there is no challenge. And then he says, well, why don't, let's go ahead and challenge it then. I don't want the penalty. Bob Kraft, well, he hasn't had many nights like this where his team right now is down by 19. And Indianapolis will go for two. The owner and the coach, it's always the same. When they lose, there's no one around. Yeah. And a fade for the deuce is thrown out of bounds. Tended for Reggie Wayne Ellis Hobbs covering on the play, so the lead will remain 19 points with 5.53. And Reggie Wayne a little slow in getting back up. Another look. There wasn't many times that he threw to Reggie Wayne tonight that Reggie Wayne didn't catch the ball. I think Reggie Wayne runs right into our camera, yeah. doesn't he? One of our, one of our men. Well, yeah, that's close up and personal. I think everybody's all right. Yeah, he's saying, what the heck? Something just hit me between the eyes. Hey, the Colts have really, really looked good tonight. I mean, they've, you know, they've they've done well on offense, obviously, and and their defense played played well against, you know, a good offense, a good quarterback and Tom Brady. And the special teams have been very active and hard hitting and Tackling crisply. <laughs> We're talking about the officiating that has all gone to heck. Right. All at once. And what Bernie Kukar is doing here, the the clock, he had a clock malfunction. So he's saying reset the the play clock. Either that or sometimes they'll kick off before the official said kick off. You know, there has to be a signal. The official down deep, you know, gives a signal to kick off, and sometimes a kicker will kick before he gets that signal. These two teams have met a lot, 66 games. Remember, they used to be in the same division, and 40 points tonight, most ever scored by the Colts, whether it's Indy or Baltimore, against the Patriots, whether it's Boston or New England. Isn't Peyton Manning calm with his offensive line and his offensive line coach tonight? Very, Howard Mudd, the very fine offensive line coach of the Colts. 12 yard line, Ellis Hobbs. And Hobbs will bring it back with a flag down at the 37 yard line. You know, I think the Colts needed this one. It was, you know, I'd said earlier that somewhere you have to Holding remove your yeah butts. 44 of the return team. That's a 10 yard penalty. First down. 
You know, and and this is one of their yeah buts. I mean, you can you can be undefeated, you can beat these other teams, yeah, but you can't beat the Patriots or or to Peyton Manning, yeah, you can win a lot of games, you can have all these records, yeah, but you can't beat Tom Brady. So they eliminated a couple of yeah buts tonight. And they have for what it's worth in the minds of some I'm sure validated themselves not that they hadn't done that to this point but clearly when you're going to rank the teams in the National Football League there is no question that the Colts would be number one otherwise you're just trying to make noise and that's incomplete I mean if this was the college football they would be a unanimous number one in any poll yeah I mean you don't get anything for being there at the halfway point but I think that, you know, as, as Tony Dungy was saying, the big thing for them, he thinks, is that bye. You know, not having to play that first week, get one less game, and then, then if you get home field, that's great. But the biggest thing is the bye, and then you go from there. Tony's led his teams to the playoffs in each of the last six seasons, last three in Tampa, first three with the Colts. Second and ten. Swing it out to the tight end. Ben Watson makes the catch. Home and road, some of the differences here for the Colts. Home games, as you can see, Peyton Manning with a record of 2-1, and one, averaging 35 points per game. But you send them away from the Dome, 1-4, and four, and the Colts average 14 per game. And there's probably some reasons for that, like weather. and Plus, when you play in the road, the other team's better than you. You know, that's why they get the home field. I mean, it's not a thing that they vote for or the league does. I mean, the, by having the best record during the regular season, you earn the right to a home playoff game. And so your record is better than the team that you're playing. And that one seed or two seed is gigantic, as you say, because that gives you that week off and guarantees you at least one home game. Your number one, of course, it guarantees you home field up through the Super Bowl. In all the years that you've watched Peyton Manning, have you ever seen him as focused or determined as he was tonight? And that's saying something because he normally is very focused and determined. But, you know, when they talk about raising it a notch or taking it to another level as Walters makes the catch, yeah, tonight's the night. Here's Peyton inside out. Best piece of advice, prepare yourself. If I could have dinner with one famous person, it would be Elvis Presley. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Footloose by Kenny Loggins best describes me. Strangest request from a fan is shaving my autograph in his back hair. <laughs> I hope you didn't do yeah, it. I, I hope, yeah. <laughs> I hope he didn't do that. You know, sometimes you just have to say no. Yeah. I, I want to know now if that request was granted or not. Inquiring minds need to know. You know, one of the things I think for this reason, and you know, in the big night that he's had here, is during the bye week, he didn't throw it all. So he felt that coming back and getting ready this week, his arm was really alive. And then he started that way and throwing these kind of balls. Three hundred eighteen yards tonight and three touchdowns. And now he's into a clock milking mode. Second and seven from the twenty three. James take care of another forty seconds up to the twenty six yard line. You know what Edron James does? He's been doing it all night. I mean, he's a very powerful runner, and but but the closer he gets to being hit, the lower he gets. You know, and he has like three different degrees of being low, and then right at the end, he gets to the lowest, where he's darn near his, his, his face mask is on the ground. And it's anything but a spectacular night for him. But you look at the numbers all of a sudden; he's two yards away from 100 yards on the ground. Now someone has to do the hard work and the dirty work, and Edron James did that tonight. Third and five out of the gun. It's caught by James, and James, with that extra little effort there, should have enough for a first down. That's going to take us just about down to the two-minute warning before the Colts would even have to think about punting. 
Bill Belichick will regather his group during the week and with Brady shaking his head they will go to Florida and play the Dolphins in Miami next Sunday. Yeah, we talk about Peyton Manning, what a great competitor he is. Tom Brady is too. And you know, and to have the upper hand to three out of four, you know, Super Bowl championships and then then have that and then and then lose it, you lose something tonight. You know, you can say it's just a game. Believe me, this one tonight isn't isn't just a game for either one of these teams. And there is Brady, and that pretty much sums it up. I mean, that's uh, that's your your picture of the evening from the New England vantage point. Meanwhile, James has now run for 101 yards. James and Harrison, you think two of the three would be in Indianapolis triplets? 20 times now, these guys have each gained either 100 yards rushing, as in the case of James, plus 100 for Harrison, and that would equal Emmett Smith and Michael Irvin, who had similar days or nights on 20 occasions and now in addition to to triplets you know they have Reggie Wayne on that other side so if you want to do something and you know take away the run and then you want to take away Marvin Harrison he still has some other guys that can really get you quadruplets they're on their way to eight and no they're two minutes from a perfect mark at midseason Their 11th straight game. And this is some kind of football team. Big rush. Johnson with the sack. The ball is alive. It's picked up and doors in. In for a touchdown. But Terrell again for at least 19 and more than that. Inside the 10. Touchdown, Denver. Denver goes home with a mark of 10 and 0. As Tony Dungy's team tries to stay undefeated, go to 8 0. And they will do that, and that augurs well for the future. As we said before, the Colts will not have to think about making a return visit to New England. Not this year, not in the playoffs. They would lead by four in the AFC standings that have a game in hand. So maybe they would meet, but it would be in Indianapolis. Third down and four from the 37 yard line. That attack is made by Harrison. And he is slung down by Roosevelt Colvin. I don't think I'd be throwing the ball out there to Marvin Harrison in this situation in the game to let him sling him down. Yeah. And I think that you know he's done his job, and I I I just let the guy go sit down or just stand out there as a decoy or something. Heck, he looks like he may be thinking the same thing. What the heck was that? Hunter Smith will come in, and that's news. Stop the presses. He didn't punt all last week. He had won the game before that, and this will be his first punt of the night. Almost 59 minutes into the game. Tim Dwight. And Tim Dwight will bring it out to the 47 yard line. This year's salary and signing bonus $25 million. Off the field endorsements $10 million. Beating the Patriots in Foxborough priceless. Perfect. You know, and you know that you know, he's going to say all the right things, whatever it is, but I think he's just pointing to his back there and he just got something off right where he was pointing. Yes, he did. Godzilla from the 46. And in the game is Doug Flutie, the oldest player in the league at the age of 43. So Flutie will finish up. Doug, who first appeared on Monday Night Football in 1986 as a Chicago Bear. I remember that, and you know, who would have thought when he first started as a Chicago Bear that all these years later he'd still be in the league? 
You go back to his college days up the road at Boston College. A phenomenal game against Miami. Pass that slipped out of his hand. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people are going, wait a minute, Doug Flutie is the backup quarterback in New England? And they were saying, what the heck did he just do there? He kind of, kind of threw a, a screen pass with a, with a jump on it. Jump pass, screen pass. Flutie last year in San Diego. And Belichick brings, brings him in here. Bill's going to watch his team go back to the locker room with a record of four and four. And that pattern continues. Win, lose, win, lose from opening day forward. Flutie's pass is incomplete. Troy Brown couldn't hold on and it's fourth down. And you know it's just kind of a you know a patchwork defense for him now. I mean he doesn't have that you know that 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 strong I mean even even when you know he lost his corners last year he still had Rodney Harrison in there who was who was kind of the glue and this year he lost the glue. So fourth and ten now at the 46 yard line. And that will move the chains, Troy Brown. Of course, going forward, there is so much airtime to fill, so much newspaper space to fill. So people will begin to talk about the Colts, of course, and until they get beaten, can they duplicate what Miami did in 1972? And then the other thing that will start to be talked about is since the Giants are six and two, is it Peyton against Eli in Detroit in February? That's already being talked about. Yeah. I, I was in New York last week and I already heard that one. And, you know, that's not far fetched. I mean, if you would have said that uh, two months ago, you'd say, oh, no, that's crazy. That's far fetched. But right now, the way the Giants are playing and obviously the way the Colts are playing, that's that's not a uh, weird idea. Offside, 90 defense, a neutral zone infraction. By the yard penalty, still first down. Well, it sets up for the, the second half of the season. Off the top of your head, biggest surprise of the first half of, of the season to this point. I don't know. I would I would probably say the team we were just talking about, the Giants. I mean, that's that's probably, and you know, Peyton's brother Eli doing so well. Uh, this team being undefeated is a surprise. To us. So the biggest surprise would probably be the Giants. Giants leading in the NFC East, Philadelphia in last place in the NFC East. 33 seconds and timeout is taken here. Doug Flutie is trying to draw a foul. That's an old basketball thing, isn't it? Where a guy runs into a guy and then falls off and puts his hands up like that. Well, Doc Rivers was here earlier I tonight, know. but he, he left to beat the traffic. Otherwise, we could have asked him about it. I was this. just looking over there to see if Doc was still here, where I could ask him if that was taking a foul. Doc's back in his apartment by now. Watch him here. This is where he tries to take the foul. Look. <laughs> I mean, he has the whole thing. He bounced, turned around, put both hands out, pointed to the official, did everything to get that foul. He'd be an easy guy to foul. It's taking a charge. He's going to go for the end zone, and that's incomplete. Tim Dwight. The intended receiver as we wind it down. So the Colts are 8 0. Cincinnati's won seven games. They haven't had their bye yet. Bengals are are seven and two. And then the teams with six wins would be Pittsburgh, Denver, the Giants, Atlanta, Carolina, and Seattle. You know, most of those, even Cincinnati, you could kind of see coming. The Giants, the reason I say they're a surprise, I didn't see that one coming. I mean, you thought Philadelphia would still be there. Maybe Dallas would be better this year. Maybe the Redskins, but not the Giants. Woody hits Graham. And that should write a finish to this one. And so the Indianapolis Colts, who haven't won here in a decade, 
it's been a house of horrors for Peyton Manning. Don't you wonder what they're doing here? Yeah, there I mean, this this game's over. Let's put it to bed. Yeah, well, it should be barring a defensive foul here. But Indianapolis forces the turnover as Robert Mathis gets there. And Mathis, he's going to wind up with a sack. So of all things, by running that extra play, Mathis keeps his streak alive of having a sack in every game this season. He'll get one there. Peyton Manning will get some congratulations as he heads back. And it will be a very happy flight back to Indianapolis.